सोच में सकारात्मकता लाएं, जीवन को बेहतर बनाएं। मनु दर्पण पर कॉल लगाए मनुबल अपना और बढ़ाए मनु दर्पण पर कॉल लगाए मनुबल अपना और बढ़ाए चलो आज ही प्रण ले हम मानसिक स्वास्थ्य सुधारे हम चलो आज ही प्रण ले हम मानसिक स्वास्थ्य सुधारे हम मनु दर्पण के काउंसलर से परामर्श पाने के लिए डायल करें टोल फ्री नंबर आठ चार चार आठ चार चार शून्य छ तीन दो नंबर एक बार फिर सुने एट फोर फोर एट फोर फोर जीरो सिक्स थ्री टू हेलो नमस्कार एंड अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल द व्यूअर्स वॉचिंग एन सी आर इज लाइव इंटर एक्टिव सेशन आई एम सिमरन सिंह एंड यू हैव ऑल कनेक्टेड विद आस थ्रू ई विद्या चैनल नंबर सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व Besides this, there are so many different mediums through which you can all connect with us. You can even participate in our live sessions by raising your questions, your queries in the comment section of our YouTube channel. That you all know, it's NCRE official. And for this half an hour, we have a program of Sahyog for all of you. Let me also apprise you that Sahyog and Parichacha they are two very special sessions under the wider initiated by the Ministry of Education that goes by the name. Manu Darpan, as a part of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyan. And uh, we come up with these programs for all of you in order to provide you psychosocial support and uh, also raise awareness about mental well-being for all our viewers, all the participants and all the learners. So providing us more insights into today's conversation, we have our two guests. I will be introducing you to the guests, but before that, here are different mediums through which you can connect with us. The first one is our tele helpline number. It is flashing on your screens. In case of doubts, feel free to reach out to us at 844-844-0632. At also, you can give us a call uh, and viewers, you can also mail us through this mail ID. That is sahyog.ncrt at the rate ciet.nic.in. The topic that we are going to discuss today is overcoming performance fear in adolescence. So we all know that examinations are approaching and uh, therefore we all feel a bit anxious, nervous when it comes to examinations and also there is this constant fear of uh, performing well, uh, how will the result turn out to be, whether I will score good or bad. So that is what performance fear is all about and how to overcome that, how to deal with that. So providing us insights into the conversation we have with us, Dr. Sarju Bala Devi ma'am from Niri NCRT Shillong. Namaskar ma'am, we welcome you. Uh, we also have our practicing counsellor in the conversation, Monika ji. Namaskar ma'am, you are also welcome. And uh, viewers, as we are discussing about performance pressure, so I believe the first question uh, is very important to be asked, uh, what exactly is performance pressure and how does it affect the performance of a student during examinations, especially the adolescence? So Dr. Sarju Bala ma'am, I will request you to please shed more light on that. Thank you for the question. Uh, in today's world, what we see, what we visualize is it is something people are going for perfection. When and because of because people are going for perfection, what we do is everywhere it is perform and perfect perform with perfection. That is the norm happening. And you see in the report cards of the children, we always see do well, work harder, keep it up, can do better. You are so and so. That means like whatever children are doing, what we expect is we want something more. That is the result why, you know, performance pressure, when we talk about pressure, when we talk about the fair, in examination, not only in examination, adolescents today, they are having some sort of fear, some sort of perfectionism, some sort of fear for being perfect or something to do well, to perform well in any sphere. And now it is the time that everyone wants to be everyone. And, you know, I want somebody wants to be, you know, uh, topper in everywhere. So what we do is we give a lot of pressure. And because of that, what happened to the students? Students are under pressure. They feel stressed, they feel anxious about the kind of expectations, maybe from within, maybe from environment. And it has become, you know, as we know about the resources which says that children perform well when they have a little stress level 
uh, which is minimal, which is optimal. But what we do is we give a lot of pressure and because of a lot of pressure, what they are doing is they are not able to perform. They are not able to perform because they fear, they cannot overcome the kind of fear that has come out from the kind of expectations, the internal expectations, outside expectations, which are from the environment. Maybe the student themselves need to keep their own pace. That is one thing that comes out from their own. And they sometimes feel that if I do good last year, this time also I'm do, going to be doing the best. And once the child has performed, it has become a norm for the people around them to say that you did this, you should be doing better. And every time, yes, of course, the kind of writings which we have shown that, you know, do well, can do better, it helps certain people, but it affects a certain group of people. And it has become a source of anxiety, a kind of stressful situation. And research SF says that, say that, more than 50% of the students feel some sort of performance anxiety. With this performance anxiety, why we are worrying, why we are concerning today is they are not able to perform. They are not able to perform because they are too much scared. They are too much, you know, they will del delves into the kind of, you know, fear because they cannot overcome the fear that affects practically on the kind of performance which they, would, they should be able to do. That is the reason why we say that it has become a problem and it has become, you know, like, you know, something that is sometimes results into stressed out, burnt out, and they just say that I will just give it up. That's the reason why we are seeing the kind of problems, you know, once the results of CBSC in class 12 and class 10 comes, we heard about children's suicide. That is only because of the kind of fear, uh, you know, fear which they say, uh, which they have already seen, and they say that they are not able to perform. So when their friend, when their good friend is committing suicide, the race of the students also, they started feeling that it is something, you know, which is not achievable, non-achievable. So they start pulling themselves out. They just give it up. They don't give a try to a certain extent or sometimes they have they have to face certain kind of anxiety situation certain kind of stress situation and we all know that children and adolescents you know adolescents face you know more than 60 percent of the students have high stress under high stress what they do they do not you know they are becoming you know some sort of uh, non-functional or some kind of you know uh, unable to perform to the kind of situations where they should they are expected to and they are able to do given that taken out the kind of stress the kind of fear which they have that is something which we say and also you know according to some research which was done in denmark it was said that children started taking some sort of beta blockers beta blockers are kind of drugs which will be reducing the kind which is used medically while to reduce the kind of you know the heartbeat, the abnormality with the heart, uh, functioning of the heart. See, children have started using that kind of drugs to overcome the kind of fear which comes during exam. That is something which we cannot think of it, which we cannot expect to go continue going. This is a kind of sick culture. And why it is happening is something like the kind of culture which we are having right now, the ideals of performance and perfection. Because of this, we have unhealthy competitions and we have unconstructive comparisons. So everywhere fear has instilled to each one of the children. So you have to perform good, you have to perform better, you have to do well, you have to do big, you should be doing this. And parents also nowadays, what they do is, you know, they think that children is their extension of themselves whatever they couldn't ex they couldn't achieve they feel that with all the support which we are providing my child should be exceeding that is something my child should be excelling that is something that affects the whole functioning of the adolescents whole mindset of the students and they just don't uh, are not able to perform they are just kept under a kind of fear which is psychologically affecting them to social in, in the social front, in the emotional front, and also in the physical front. And we don't want to have those kind of children 
That's why we say, uh, you know, we think that it is something we have to learn to cope with and we have to teach some sort of lessons. We have to build an understanding on how performance fear has to be overcome. Yes, fear should be there for certain competition, for anything where the child is taking a part, but still it should not be overriding the kind of, um, you know, ability of the child, the kind of struggles which the child is doing. That is what performance fear is all about. Uh, of course, it is quite an important topic and it's very important to address this area what exactly performance fear is because I believe if a child is having performance fear then he might not be able to perform well due to this. So, it is very important to overcome performance fear and uh, then we also need to know some of the observable symptoms that we can witness in a child that we can see that a child is going through these problems. Uh, so, Monica ma'am, uh, please share these details with us. Thank you, ma'am, for asking this question. Uh, thank you, Sergio, ma'am, for highlighting uh, this, this topic that is the fear of um, performance among adolescents. So, uh, it is very important for us to know that how actually we can identify that we are having this fear of performance. So, I have detailed it in physical, cognitive, behavioral, emotional and social aspects. I will take it one by one. If I talk about the physical symptoms, so how can you identify that you are having this fear or not? So you might have just increased heart rate, right? You are you must be feeling uh, your heart is racing, or pounding very fast. So increased heart rate is one kind of physical symptom that you can have. Sweating, shaking, trembling, some kind of physical symptoms are there which helps you identify that you are having this fear of pressure, right? Also you sometimes uh, fall short of breath. You are not breathing properly. So this also signifies that yes, you have this pressure. And some students also feel nausea, stomach ache, and something like that. If I talk about the cognitive aspects, the cognitive means you must be having some kind of intrusive thoughts, the thoughts which are coming back to back in your mind like, okay, I'm not feeling well, I should study, I should study, but on paper, you are not doing that, right? So, the thoughts are troubling you. So, intrusive thoughts are there, then loss of focus and concentration. So, because of this intrusive thought, sometimes the students tend to have this lack of concentration and they are not able to focus properly. What happens? They also develop this negative self-talk. So, they started talking to themselves negatively, right? Okay, I have a, a very less time, I cannot do, I cannot do. So, this kind of, these kind of talks, they are increased. When you are feeling high, the pressure is high, you feel much negative inside you, right? And what happens, ultimately, you tend to forget the topics that you have learned. So, this is for cognitive aspects. If I talk about behavioral aspects, so it can be observed by the near ones, they can also feel like you are feeling very restless, you are roaming here and there regularly. So, just like a pendulum, so they may, they may ask you what's wrong with you. So, this is one kind of behavioral aspect that I should talk about. Then excessive time check, okay, what's the time, what's the time, have I completed my work, have I completed my work, this kind of restlessness or checking your answers time and again. This kind of behavioral symptom you may, you may have. Then if I talk about this emotional aspect, so emotionally you will be feeling very down. You are not feeling good at all. So if you are not feeling good at all, you will not be able to study properly, right? So this is, sometimes students are also teary. They start to cry. Okay, I am uh, not able to focus and all. All these uh, symptoms tend to make the student cry also. So this is for emotional. If I talk about social aspect, what happens due to this pressure, they tend to withdraw themselves from the social circle, from uh, from their parents also, they tend to withdraw themselves, they want to stay alone, they are not able to communicate what they are feeling or sometimes they need to uh, reassurance. Time and again they want, okay, if I am right or not, if I am if I'm doing correct, whether I am wrong, some kind of assurance, reassurance they, they want. So, these are some kind of uh, observable symptoms that the students can have. 
Okay, and if a student is going through all these uh, symptoms, they are quite, uh, you can see them, you can observe them in a child. So, I think an important responsibility lies on the shoulders of teachers and parents to address these concerns, to look after their children, to look after their students. So, providing us more insights into that area, we have with us again, uh, Sir Jubala, ma'am. Uh, yes, when children are having this kind of problem, we have to accept that this is they are children they are just growing up they have to be helped with it so first thing is that both the teacher and parents can provide reassurance and normalize mistakes everyone commits mistakes we have to let children understand that mistakes are normal thing and you know we teacher and the parents they should be telling that yes we are there for you you don't need to worry that is something a kind of confidence building and also, in order to make them more confident, what we will be doing is we will be we need to praise the child to a certain praise the child on his or her efforts, and also, if possible, remind them about the time that they did well. That gives a lot of self confidence. We will be able to, you know, if you have an example whereby the particular child did very well. You have to tell it once again, yes, you can do it, and we are always there to help you. That will boost their self-esteem. When they build their self-confidence, they will be able to come out. And also, why the performance pressure is a mount, mounting up is something like children started building up some sort of unrealistic goals. So we should be able to teach them how to set realistic goals, achievable goals. We need to fragment the kind of goals which they start uh, thinking about and how to work about it. That is something which we need to tell them, teach them. And also, we need to let them understand that the process is more important than product all the time. It is not that performance is, maybe performance is one time, but how the child is putting his or her efforts to achieve that particular you know, level, that is something we need to focus on. When we focus on the process, then obviously they will be feeling more confident. And also we need to let them understand that performance is not the ultimate end. It should, because performance, when we talk about performance, performance in an event, performance in an exam, that is not the complete end, that is not a disaster. If you fail in an exam, it is not a disaster. It is a kind of, you know, experience in a given situation and a moment of time you can overcome it that reassurance that much confidence we need to give as a teacher as a teach, uh, parent then what is observed right now is children are not sharing children are not sharing what they are fair for children are not sharing what they are insects of what they do is they say that they have a feeling that if i share this kind of particular you know, weaknesses, they consider it as a weakness, but it is not a weakness. It is, you know, when you learn something, there are challenges, there are difficulties. They need to be able to share it with somebody. Otherwise, if they don't share it, it became a vicious circle. They, If they think that if I share this kind of weakness, what others will say and what others will just. We have to break that silence culture. We have to tell them that, yes, you have to, we are here to listen to you with empathy. And that that is something we are reassuring our presence to them that is something very very important and also the kind of school culture which we are seeing right now we need to find out a way on the collaborative and cooperative learning so the children can have a relaxed and self-study community not the neck-to-neck -neck competition which are on uh, unconstructive and which are very very detrimental that is something and talk not only and in the social media also and whatever we celebrate is only the success so it is not but we need to let our children understand that it is not the stories of success available there are stories of difficulties there are stories of failure through that one can over you know you have to learn it as an experience point you have to start it as a springboard from where you can leap further higher that is something we need to talk about it and also we as a supporting group we as a supporting partner in the life of the child we should guide 
guide them what you should do, what you should not do, and also always be support and motivating the child. That is something which we parents can do. We in the school also we can talk about it. That is something both the teacher and student teachers can do in the uh, for overcoming the kind of fear which they have. Of course, uh, there were certain important details that were mentioned by you with regard to performance pressure, and I think uh, performance pressure is something that we all face at some point in our uh, life, whether it's uh, adolescents, whether it's uh, little children, or uh, whether it's adults. We all face it. We face it uh, during our jobs. We face it during examinations, and also in different walks of life. So the important question that stays in front of us is how to overcome this performance pressure, especially when we talk in the context of adolescence. So, um, uh, Monica, ma'am, I'll request you to reflect on this area, and also uh, keeping in view that we have the last two to three minutes left. So, I request you to be uh, please be very specific and precise. Okay. Okay. So yes, adolescence is actually notoriously stressful age. Many things are going in and around them, and above all, they have exams. So it is quite obvious to develop some kind of pressure during the exams for the adolescent, right? So I will directly come to the point because uh, now we should talk about how to overcome this, right? So the first thing is to start early and prepare thoroughly. So if you are starting with the session, with the beginning of the session, if you are starting your preparation and preparing it thoroughly, it will somehow decrease the amount of pressure that you feel in the time of examination. Also, if you are practicing under the examination circumstances, if you have your exam for three hours, say suppose, so you can just have a sample paper, have a stopwatch with you, cut out, do not disturb me, have that uh, tag just in front of your study table. So you can just practice it according to your exam uh, uh, exam circumstances so that you are not feeling much pressurized during the actual exam scenario, right? And also you can have positive self-talk. Earlier I was talking about negative self-talk. So that is decreasing your uh, focus and concentration. But if you have this positive self-talk, it, uh, it just works vice versa, right? So you should have like, I can do this, uh, set a realistic goal. Of course, uh, our practicing counsellor Monica Ma'am was sharing certain important details with us how to overcome examination fear very quickly. Sir Jubala Ma'am, I'll request you for the concluding remarks and few words. Uh, Sir Jubala Ma'am. All right, viewers, this is our yes. Sahyog program where we were discussing about how to overcome uh, performance pressure and we have our expert with us, Sarju Wala ma'am, very quickly, I'll request you to please conclude uh, the conversation for all of us. Okay. So, everyone feels pressure, fear to perform well, but you are not alone. It's wrong to think that others do not feel it. Others also are feeling the same thing. And when you have an unrealistic goal, whatever, or when you have a problem while achieving your ambitions and motivations, what you have to do is strike a balance. Strike a balance to break down the high demands. It's natural that sometimes things do not work the way as we wish. Difficulties, challenges, and failures are natural components of learning. That is something which you need to think. And grades are not everything. Personality, motivation, and human skill are as important as grades. That is, and I would like to end with what Church, Winston Churchill says, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. That is a big lesson which I would like to say to the audience. Of course, uh, that means consistency is the most important thing. You'll have to be consistent with your efforts in order to achieve a success in life. Uh, thank you so much to both the experts for connecting with us. Uh, thank you, Sir Jubala Ma'am and thank you, Monica Ma'am, uh, for sharing the valuable insights with all of us. Thank you to all the viewers who have connected with CIT and CRT for this particular live interactive program of Sahyog. Well, uh, we are wrapping up this program, but do not go anywhere because next up we have our special segment that is on school leadership and development. So keep watching it with your channels. Take very good care of yourself and all the very best for your examinations. Namaskar. 
सोच में सकारात्मकता लाएं, जीवन को बेहतर बनाएं। मनु दर्पण पर कॉल लगाएं, मनुबल अपना और बढ़ाएं। मनु दर्पण पर कॉल लगाएं, मनुबल अपना और बढ़ाएं। चलो आज ही प्रण ले हम, मानसिक स्वास्थ्य सुधारे हम। चलो आज ही प्रण ले हम, मानसिक स्वास्थ्य सुधारे हम। मनु दर्पण के काउंसलर से परामर्श पाने के लिए डायल करें टोल फ्री नंबर 844-844-0632 नंबर एक बार फिर सुने 844-844-0632